She is working like a charm. Welcome back to All The Mods 9. We are now starting episode 6. Last time we finished up this beautiful melon farm. We made it so we can expand on it. And now we will continue with making the ore processor. I just collected all of the iron from the iron golem farms. And you could say we got quite a bit. We're going to be using a ton of iron come soon. I believe we're going to need quite a few steel casings. So having the iron is going to be nice. But we're actually, surprisingly, going to need some coal. But it will be much easier and cheaper if we use the metallurgic infuser. Within the metallurgic infuser, you can take carbon, any form of carbon here, and you can put an iron ingot in. It'll become enriched iron, and then if you pass it back through again, it'll become steel dust. So it's going to be much cheaper, especially if we make, I believe it's enriched carbon, the enrichment chamber, which will save us a ton of coal, I'm hoping. <laughs> and then we should be able to get all the steel that we need to finish what we're going to do here. We have a few quests to gather. Let's see if it gives us anything interesting. We got some infused alloy and some pressurized tubes. Oh, it actually gave us a lot of infused alloy. I am happy with that. That always is nice to see. It will save us. And we got a quartz hammer. Do I have a guest? I do. I don't think I want what you're selling, sir. Ah, so over here, I was trying to get some dripstone working with some pipes and a fluid tank. I have tried like four different types of fluid pipes trying to get this damn thing to work and I cannot figure it out. It is unfortunate, but it is what it is. So let's think about this. We have our melon farm here. I'm debating on if we even if we just want to move this, right? Because this is rather close to our house. We might want to move it to a place that is themed to be for power. Like some type of power grid area. I'll think about it and we will see what I decide to do. So I didn't realize this at first, but framed blocks are in this pack. I've never used these, but I see these used so much. So I might want to try my hand at using these bad boys i think they could be really really cool since we're gonna need one anyway i'm gonna make an energized smelter here but i'm gonna use it to smelt up some of this cobbled deep slate and then maybe lay out some sort of power grid area to where we can move all of our power generation i went ahead and made a few speed and energy upgrades we'll use these for our smelter as well but we're gonna use them on the enrichment chamber here to get enriched carbon so we can make some steel very quickly and i'll just move these upgrades from machine to machine as i'm going right now uh just to save us some time because we have we have plenty of power this is with these upgrades it's only using 63 fe per tick oh yeah this is so much cheaper so only 16 enriched carbon gave us a full line of fuel here and each enriched iron is only using 10 millibuckets of carbon so and you have to pass this through twice even passing it through twice only uses a fourth. Even by passing this through twice, it is much cheaper than going manually breaking down into steel dust with the ore hammer. Because you're using four coal per steel dust there. This is way cheaper. Yep, both cycles only use 10 millibuckets of carbon. This is so nice. Oh my goodness. Steel casing, energized smelter. I'm gonna upgrade the energized smelter to a basic smelting factory, and then I'm also gonna upgrade it to an advanced smelting factory, just so we can have f five lines of things cooking at once. I'm gonna save the rest of my enriched carbon here. We had 960 millibuckets of carbon left, which is the perfect amount to get these 48 iron ingots passed through here twice. But since that machine is being occupied, we need to make another metallurgic infuser, which is totally fine with me. It'll make things much faster for us. On the theme of saving resources, let's make some energized redstone. There is our advanced smelting factory. So since we have the advanced smelting factory, as you can see, it has five lines. The smelter starts off with just one, you know, one row. But as you level it up, it gains two each time. 
So the basics melting factory had three, and now the advanced one has five. The next level will have seven, and the final level will have nine slots that you can sort through. You can also upgrade this with speed and energy upgrades to become even more efficient. But keep in mind, the more and more that you level this thing up, it's going to use a ton of power. Okay, let's see how much... Ooh, four redstone, which would be 40 millibuckets, turned into 320. So it multiplied itself by eight when you enrich it. I'm going to make 32 infused alloy with this. Let's open up our dank here and let's get to smelting. God, that thing is so loud. <laughs> we'll let this bad boy cook and then we'll think about what we want to do with our power situation. Oh, hello, Perry. Let's go take a gander at Perry over here. Oh. Perry's got the squad with him. Goodbye, Perry. What did you give me? Another leather piece of armor. Okay. Thanks for wasting my time. The sun is rising. Oh, that brother's gone. I'm going to make a deposit upgrade, which will allow me to drop things into my storage system just by right-clicking my backpack onto the barrel. Need to cook up some leather, though. Oh, hello, bud. What's up, Jerry? His name's Jerry. We got some quest rewards. XP. Nice. So with the deposit upgrade... When you put it into the slot here, you can tell your backpack what you want to keep in it. When you right click your backpack on any storage system, it will maintain the items that you've told it to keep in here. For now, we just want to store everything. But before we do that, let's go ahead and make a stack upgrade so this barrel can hold a ton of stuff. What's really nice about these stack upgrades is that they stack on top of each other. You need a higher level barrel each time you want to add another upgrade to it. So I'm going to upgrade this one to gold. Now we can put two stack upgrades in here and now it should hold a bunch of items in one slot. Yep, there you go, look at that. So the way this works, these upgrades multiplicatively stack, which means you take, it says, can fit in a slot by four. So it multiplies how much can fit in a slot by four and this one also does that. So it's four times four. So it's 16 stacks can fit into one block here. Now this importer is gonna be very, very slow. So we really want to make a stack upgrade and some speed upgrades for it. Unfortunately, that does mean that we are completely out of slime um, and the processor pieces, but that is okay. We, we will solve that problem after we get our ore factory up and we do everything else here that we wanna do. What I mainly care about is continuing to get more and more efficient as time goes on. Efficiency, baby. I mean, my favorite part about modded Minecraft is building the machines and making everything flow faster and getting as much possible automated. I mean, because where's the fun in just mining over and over when there's mods that can literally do it for you? Oh, yeah, this is going to be much better to clear out my backpack now. Ooh -wee. Thank you, Mr. Gold Barrel. You are nits. And we got our stack upgrade and our speed upgrade in here. So this will pull out much faster and it'll pull one stack at a time. Beautiful, beautiful. Some quests. Oh, we got some more basic processors and speed upgrades. Well, I'm gonna chuck them in there. Thank you. This is the first of many importers. We're gonna have so many. Our deep slate is cooking up nicely and then we can mess with this chipped mason table to get even more interesting blocks. We'll just check this down here. Well, our steel dust finished, so I went ahead and transferred over the speed and energy upgrade, so this should go much faster. Now, what pattern do we want to go with here? Probably something that looks pretty manufactured, since it's going to be a power area. Let's try the cut deep slate to see what this looks like together. Oh, that looks quite nice, actually. It would look really nice on borders, because it just flows very nicely. Yep, that looks pretty manufactured to me. All right, let's use that. Well, we have five stacks of cut deep slate, and we can now think about what we want to do over here. Let's turn on some chunk borders and see where we're at. 
Yeah, we definitely want to be building it over here. But I want the chunk borders on, so we build it directly on chunk border limits. Okay, let's go to sleep before we continue that, and I'll get to work. Platform complete. Now that we have the platform built, let's go ahead and move our melon farm. The melon farm has been moved. I redesigned it a little bit just to be a little more flat. I just wanted everything to be a little bit closer down. I've added a power cord trench right here that I'm gonna run through, and then we can run that back through to the base. It's outside of the chunk border, but that is okay. I'm not too worried about that. But the rest of this is all within the chunk border. What I plan to do from here is build the mining factory probably over here. So let's check to see if we have everything we need. I will also go ahead and force load this entire area. Oh damn, I just got a stack upgrade tier 2 from a quest. And a beehive. The blood moon spawned, so I just decided to lay down a whole bunch of torches over here because I do not want to deal with that. <laughs> but look, somehow that zombie can smell me. The blood moon is evil. Look at that. They just all spawned over there. Leave me alone. Holy crap. Oh, what the hell? This blood moon is trying to kill me for real, man. Jeez. All of you damn mobs need to burn. Yeah. Burn. All of you. Come on, all you zombies. Oh, there's an undead knight over there, too. Burn, all of you. Ouch. Alright, now that that's over, let's uh, continue to try to get our power over there. Where are these guys? These guys peaceful? Oh, well now I feel bad. Hello. What a peaceful little guy. Well, the best idea actually might be to just make some quantum entangle porters. The quantum entangle porter is an item that allows you to transfer power wirelessly. Let's see if I can even make one. I need a teleportation core, which I believe I can make, because I can make this atomic alloy. Okay, let's think about this. So, I'm gonna need two of these, which means I'm gonna need eight refined obsidian, four ultimate control circuits, four atomic alloys, and another four atomic alloys. So, let's check mechanism. Okay, I currently have five of these. I have 13 refined obsidian, which is enough. I have enriched diamonds. I'm going to need more alloy, which I should have. Yep, I have 32. I need some diamonds. Let's get to work. I need eight of these in the enrichment chamber. Now I need the atomic alloy. 
Oh, shit. I done messed up. Well, now I need more refined obsidian dust. Well, good thing it's not too expensive. Two of those. Let's hope this quest reward give us some good stuff. All right, we got more atomic alloy. Nice. Well, we got one. That is okay. Um, one of these in there. Make some more atomic alloy. Now we need more advanced alloy. We have one quantum entangle porter. And we got another teleportation core. Nice. We can save some resources. That is very nice, actually. Sweet. We can save some damn resources. We're going to need three more of these, which need enriched diamond. We're going to need some more enriched diamond. We can make our final ultimate control circuit. And now we just need one more atomic alloy. And there we go. Boom, second quantum entangle porter. Awesome, okay, sweet. So now we can do this. Remove that, put this here. Now we need to create a network for the quantum entangle porter to be a part of. There are two types of network. You can do a public network so you can share with everybody or you can do your own private network. I'm gonna name my network power. Okay, so each quantum entangle porter has its own side configs, but in order to use them, you need to make sure that it's a part of at least one type of network. It can be a public network or a private one. So we're gonna do a private one, power, and we want to make sure that this one outputs to the front and takes input from everywhere else. So this is gonna output into our power cube here. It's going to be able to accept power from anything else that is a part of the power network. Since we have that as a part of the power network, what we want to do, we'll come over to, we'll go right here and we will place the entangle porter right here. Now, we want to make it a part of the power network. So we set it as a part of that network. We tell it to for energy, we want to output, and we want to we want to output to the bottom, and we want to take input from the back. So it's taking all of the power from here. It's outputting it into this quantum entangle porter, which is in turn this is filling up with the power that's all the way over there. Super nice, super useful, really awesome system. Now make sure. Make sure when you're using the quantum entangle porter that you make that you turn on auto eject or else it'll just hold the power and it won't give it to anything. All right, sweet. There's our remote power situation sorted. So now we still have this line of power cables. I was going to try to extend it all the way back to my base, but that just didn't seem feasible. It didn't seem like a good idea. But regardless of that, having this line of power cables to send throughout the entire thing here will be a nice thing to have. I should I should shift this over by two and get this line of power cables within the chunk so I can load less chunks, but I'm not too worried about it at the moment. That'll be something that I might do later. Okay, now the moment that I have been waiting for for so long, it is now time to get into the ore factory itself. Oh, I'm so excited. Let's do this. Okay. Let's check what we need and let's get started. So if you go to the mechanism guide and you read these, it will start to tell you what these machines do and it'll give you a guide as to um, what order to put these machines in. The most useful one is going to be right here. It's gonna be the tier two or factory and it'll tell you what order the machines need to be in to get things started. But what we want to do is to get to the hard part here. And we are going to stop at this part and we're not gonna go further for now. This is a really nice base area to be in. Uh, you're turning three raw ore into eight ore shards. So you're multiplying your ore by 2.67 times, which is 
already really nice. Later on, you can get into this, and it's going to be way more complicated. I actually haven't done this before. It's going to be absolutely insane once we get to this part. But for now, let's focus on getting to Tier 3 or Factory. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is make a purifying... We need to make a purification chamber, which needs an enrichment factory, okay? Which we need a steel casing for. Good thing I made some steel casing. But we also need some basic control circuits. Now, osmium takes typically two redstone dust per, so we're going to go ahead and throw in eight redstone here to become enriched redstone, and then we will toss it into the metallurgic infuser. Here is where I'm going to actually take these upgrades out and put them into my infusing into my metallurgic infuser because we are going to need this and what i will do is i'm going to go ahead and try to upgrade this metallurgic infuser into an infusing factory because holy cow we're going to need that we need we need this thing to be going fast this is going to take a long time to build up all the resources we need for this ore factory <laughs> all right there's the basic infusing factory done let's go ahead and toss this enriched redstone in and toss in the osmium and we will install our speed and energy upgrades we'll toss that in there and then we will just toss the iron in go iron go now enrichment chamber done purification chamber done we have rewards to collect let's do that very nice we got some stuff we're going to go ahead and build another enrichment chamber because i'm pretty sure we're going to need another one of those later down the line Yep, and would you look at that? The chemical injection chamber needs some elite control circuits and a reinforced alloy, which takes a purification chamber as part of its recipe, which means another enrichment chamber. So I guess we should just make two, just in case, because I know we're going to have to put the enrichment chamber a part of the machine line. So let's just prepare for that. Here's where things can start to get very expensive. So make sure you have quite a bit of uh, diamonds on hand, because you're going to need them. All right, chemical injection chamber needs two of these to be turned into elite control circuits. Chemical injection chamber done. We have more quest rewards. Let's go ahead and grab that so we can get some loot. All right, more infused alloy. Very nice. Okay, we're going to need another electrolytic separator, so let's get that done. One electrolytic separator. We are out of steel. Unfortunate. Let's go ahead and check our iron farm because we are running low on iron and now we're not 314 iron all right crusher achieved now here comes the fun part we need to build a thermal evaporation plant so we can get the liquid called brine for that we are going to need a lot of water so let's go ahead and make a sink which we need terracotta for We're going to need a ton of steel. We need more upgrades. We're going to need a ton of steel, so I'm just going to make a lot of it. <laughs> it's a good thing we have that iron farm because, gosh, we would not even be close to being able to afford this. Upgrades, people. Upgrades. Go faster, smelter. Still not enough steel. I'm out of infused alloy. Oh my gosh. Not anymore, I'm not. Alright, that is the first portion of the quest done. And we got some tiny little rewards. Resistive heater, done. Time for the chemical infuser. Chemical infuser complete. We have reached the quest line for tier 3 ore factory. Now let's place things down. Boom. It's filling up with water. So I went ahead and upgraded these uh, mechanical pipes to elite. Just so they can 
pull a ton of water at once. So with the thermal evaporation factory, you need to have a controller, at least one controller, at least two valves, one valve to take in water and one to output the brine, which I will be moving. Now a nice upgrade that we can add to this brine factory is the resistive heater. And for that, we're gonna need some thermodynamic conductors. I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade these all the way to ultimate. I don't know if I need to, but I would like to have them done. So we power the resistive heater and we push this into the brine factory. Now we can change how much power this is using and depending on how much power we put in, the temperature will increase based on that amount of power input. Now our brine factory is absolutely full. All right, now we need to output that brine. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a fluid tank to hold the extra brine. Let's go ahead and upgrade our basic energy cube so it can store more and transfer more. All right, there we go. Now this thing is pumping out energy. The brine is getting output, very nice. Always remember if you're using power cables to come down here and make sure that your system doesn't break when you are changing out your power storage. All right, now onto the fun part. We are once again out of steel. Luckily we cooked some more. Hehe. <laughs> So we need a mechanical pipe, we need you to output, we need the electrolytic separator here to take brine, we're going to need another sink. So now you are outputting chlorine and sodium idle dumping excess. The chlorine goes into a chemical infuser, input to an auto -jack on gases output two okay you have power this is where things get wacky <sighs> so you need hydrogen which means i need another electrolytic separator now this is going oh Duh. You guys should be vibing now, right? Yeah, you guys are cooking. Now we're cooking with gas. Okay. Alright, hydrogen chloride. This might look a little wonky the way I have this set up, but I have this set up for expansion specifically. Before I noticed that I was running out of, or this wasn't pumping fast enough when I made this setup previously, so I just wanted to put some pipes between things, um, because they're faster than the machines can actually output themselves. Until you upgrade the machines, of course. Alright, now let's go ahead and put this raw gold in here and see what happens. And we'll continue to build up the machines as this gets processed. Okay, now we have oxygen piped in. Now we need to add the crusher. Now the enrichment chamber. And then the smelter. Beautiful. Well, 
We have completed the tier 3 ore factory. This will turn 3 raw ore into 8 shards. Then it'll get processed down into clumps from the purification chamber. Then the clumps get processed down into dirty dust by the crusher. Then the enrichment chamber turns that dirty dust into regular dust. And then the smelting factory will smelt it down. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Now would be the perfect time to get our compressing drawers ready and our external storage ready and move all of these into their own compacting drawers. All right, we've added some upgrades to our melon farm just to keep the power flowing. We might want to add another electrolytic separator just to focus solely on oxygen. But for now, I'm just going to set them both to dumping excess. So this unfortunately will continuously work, but at least it will be piping oxygen and hydrogen into the machines that need them. And we can add upgrades to this process. Uh, later to make them run faster as well as upgrade each machine to hold more items um, Just like this machine is right here All right, it is time to clear these bad boys out Now, unfortunately, we are out of slime. So what I'm doing right now is I am looking for a jellyfish to hopefully swab it. Uh, with the mob swab, you can take a mob's DNA and then you can turn it into a certain chicken feed. And after you turn it into that chicken feed, you can then get a spawn egg for that mob and you can use that spawn egg on a spawner so I want to make a jellyfish spawner if I can um, because they will drop slime balls or they will once they die you can cook up their body to get slime balls so that could be an alternative for slime right now for us now I very rarely see them so I, I hope we can find one what in the world are you? Whoa. Ooh, that thing is messing me up. I don't know what that is. Oh, I'm drowning. Damn, this guy is strong. He didn't even drop anything. And he was kicking my ass. Now the reason we need slime right now is because I'm trying to set up and build some exporters and importers for my refined storage network, but we don't have any slime, so we can't build the processors that we need. Oh, jellyfish. Oh, here they are. I got their DNA. Yeah. Jellyfish DNA. Perfect. Alright, now we can kill the rest. <laughs> Got home just in time. My jetpack ran out of fuel. Okay, let's charge up this bad boy and go smelt these jellyfish. Now I'm not going to go I'm not going to make the spawner at the moment. I just wanted to get that mob swab in there so we can have it 
once we decide to build a farm for that. Okay, exporter achieved. I don't know why I didn't think about this before, but when I was placing the external storage last time, it doesn't have to be on the controller. I can also place it on the disk drive, so we can still hook this up and it not be looking very, very ugly. <laughs> now, what I'm doing here is actually incorrect. If you put an exporter and an external storage bus onto the drawers, all it's going to do is put in items, take out items, and continue to do that. So I'm just going to skip the 30 minutes that it took for me to figure out exactly what to do, and then I'll let previous frustrated Slick tell you what I did to fix it. My system here was really, <laughs> they were really messing with each other uh, because it was trying to export into this and this was outputting because of priority and such. So the priority I have on here is negative one, um, which is last. So it is the least prioritized. And I have down here, I put this on priority 100. So it will always try to put things in here first. Now the issue that I was having is I still had remnants of ingots in the system before I put them in here. So it was running into problems where it, if you already have stuff in your system, it's not going to try to relocate them like into here or something. So in theory, my extractor would have worked if I had enough stack upgrades and speed upgrades on them. So it was faster than it was actually putting it back into my system. But the way that I resolved this was I just took everything out of the system and then you just put it back in and when you put it back in then it resolves okay look for somewhere to put this first and it puts it in here first and then that fixed the issue I'm gonna have a ton more of these as I get more ingots um, but this was this is nice to save me space before I set this up I was storing 14,000 items but now I'm saving 3,200 slots so that's really nice Okay, so now that we have our ore factory all done with, we can now set it up to automatically output ore. Now the one big issue that might arise when you're doing this is that the chemical injection chamber here needs three ore at a time, which means that if you put more than three, you could potentially clog up your system. So you need a way to avoid clogging up your system and make sure that you're importing the correct amount of items into here so it doesn't clog up your line. Now that's something that I'm gonna save for the next episode. This footage right here was already three and a half hours cut down to 38 minutes-ish. So I'm gonna stop this here. Like I mentioned in the previous episode, Endings are getting a bit less tangible because there's so much grinding to do, but that's okay with me. I had a ton of fun, and I'm so happy to finally get this setup running and have it going now. Having the compacting drawers done as well is so awesome. Now in our system, we can see blocks, ingots, and nuggets, and we don't even have to worry about converting those. Those drawers will do it for us on the fly, and that's really cool. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching me struggle through the process that is mechanism. There's so much more complex things still to this mod, but we're gonna pause right here and we'll get back into it and we'll solve this problem of transferring the ore properly in our next episode. Again, thank you so much. I hope you take care and I'll see you next time.